Hi guys, it's Morgan Jenkins, AKA Miss Mojangles, and today I'm here to talk to you about Spin Sanity Flow Down, and specifically your routine for the showcase. I will be a member of the judges panel, and this will be my third year judging Spin Sanity, so I have seen a lot of amazing routines, and I wanted to give you some insight on things to think about as you're coming up with your own routine for the flow case. First, this really is just for fun. Even the judges are going to get judged. It's, um, I think, intimidating at first to hear the word judged, but I can assure you that we are not there to change the way you hoop or to critique the way you hoop. We are there to offer constructive feedback on your routine, which is, I'm assuming, what you guys want. And that's why you're performing in front of us, and that's to get that feedback so that uh, you can have the best routine possible and we can all grow as a community. So that's the vision, and I just really want you guys to know that the judges are all cheering for you. So that's number one. Check the link below in the description. I put a link for the Spin Sanity Flow Down Facts page, which stands for Frequently Asked Questions, in case you didn't know that. On the page, there is a downloadable judges score sheet. So you actually can already see ahead of time what it is that we're looking for. All right, let's start with difficulty. So obviously you can't compare someone who's been hooping for 20 years and uses all the multiple hoops to someone who just started hooping, uses one hoop and still wants to enter the competition. We're not judging you based off the difficulty of your hooping versus the other hoopers. It's more about where you choose to take the most difficult tricks that you know and put them in the routine. So be really deliberate about where you put your tricks. Moving on to execution, in this category we have musicality, flexibility, control, timing, and continuity. So the biggest one for me in this category is musicality. How can you be a visual representation of the song in your routine? Make sure if your song has some silent beats that you really hit those. If your song is fast in parts, hoop maybe fast during that part. If your song slows down, try to match your movement to the music. Another one in this section is control. So we all drop our hoop and I will probably drop my hoop on stage and when I drop my hoop, I lose control. And doing it once or twice, totally fine. If you do it a bunch of times, still fine, but that's probably where we might not give you a plus in that category if you're constantly losing control of your hoop. Here's a tip so that that doesn't happen. That's simply just breathing. Make sure that in your routine, you give yourself space to breathe. You know, the adrenaline's gonna be pumping, you're going to do your moves twice as fast as normal because your adrenaline has you going and that's usually when you lose control of the hoop when your adrenaline shoots it out of your hand totally cool just take deep breaths during your performance and if you drop it it's totally okay just make it part of the act pick it up and keep on going don't let the drop stop you next section is technique body lines dance planes grids isolations footwork so here, let's start with dance. You don't need to be a professional dancer. You don't need to have any dance training. We're not gonna judge you based on how many extracurricular dance classes you've taken. It's more like, are you moving? Are you kind of grooving with the song? This also jumps back to the musicality. For me personally, even if you're a tech hooper, I just don't wanna see everything all in one place. There's been a lot of amazing technical hoopers on that Spin Sanity stage who still find a way to move around and make little fun movements part of the routine. I'm going to skip ahead to choreography. So for me, this is a big one. I want to see that you came prepared with something, meaning don't sign up, show up on the day, pick your song the night before, and then get on stage and flow. Like at least have a beginning, a middle, an end, something where I can tell that, oh, they choreographed this. For me, it's a really big one because I think that you're doing yourself a disservice if you just show up and wing it, even if you feel like you hoop better in the flow state. Just at least pick like an opening pose or an ending pose, something that shows us, the judges, that you've prepared. 
And on that note, I will also add that you must take a bow. A lot of people, they're done, they're like, okay, bye. But you have to stop, take a deep breath, take it all in, and take a bow. Choreography, creativity is something we judge on. Obviously, there are a lot of famous hoop sequences, but try to think outside the box. Try to make your routine your own. Don't just watch someone else's routine on the internet. Take some of their combos and put them together for your own. Like, find a way to express yourself with your own unique movement. Okay, level changes is a big one for me. I want to see you really use the space use the floor, maybe crouch sometimes. When you see a routine and everything's just at one level, it's just not as dynamic as when you pick some moments to be on the ground or maybe you jump or maybe you even jump off the stage and use the audience. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I personally love seeing some level changes. Use of area, that means use the whole stage. It is an amazing stage, it's humongous and there's plenty of room for you to move around, get creative, so really use the space. Here where it says creative use of props, that means for me, maybe your hoop doesn't always have to be a hoop. Maybe it can be something else. Maybe your hoop can be a window. Maybe it can be a portal. Maybe it can be a telephone. I don't know. Just think outside the box when you're creating your routine. Moving on to showmanship, the first one is projection. That means don't look down all the time. Even when you're in flow state, try not to always like look down as you're doing stuff. We wanna see your face. And if you're a person like me where your hair just wants to do this when you're hooping, try to think of a cute way to like get it back so that we can really see you. We want your face to project. We want your whole routine to project, to project, to project out. <laughs> wow. And yeah, we just want to see you. That's what we want. We want to see you. Appearance and costume. You don't need the most elaborate costume. You just need a costume that works for your act. Like, for example, your costume could be black leggings and a black t-shirt, and that could work for your song. Or if you have an involved routine, like my flight attendant outfit is very involved and involves a top thing that snaps off with an underlayer that can also unzip, revealing more. This is a very involved costume. You don't have to have an involved costume, but if you want to, awesome. Here's a sneak peek at my new costume. Okay, bye. The most important thing here is eye contact. Let me tell you in a little story why eye contact is so important. Let's say you go to a Taylor Swift concert and your seats are fourth row, left-hand side, and you watch the whole show and she's in the middle of the stage, she's singing, it's amazing, right? It becomes this incredible concert you saw. But now let's say in the middle of the show, she pops the mic off the stand and walks over to you and she looks right in your eyes and she's like, shake it off, shake it off, or whatever, or look what you made me do. But she's singing it to you. She's looking right in your eyes, you're suddenly part of her world and that just became the best concert you've ever seen in your life and it's because she looked at you so i personally look for eye contact i want to feel like i'm allowed to be there watching this experience but by looking at me you're inviting me into your world so make sure to make eye contact not only with the judges but with the audience because they are your biggest cheerleaders okay just to summarize what i think the most important things are Eye contact, most important. Using the whole stage and levels. Coming prepared with something, even if it's just a beginning, middle, end. Wearing something that works for your routine, so a costume, but it doesn't have to be elaborate, just something that shows that you came prepared. Breathing, making sure to give yourself time to breathe in your act and also giving the audience a second to breathe. This goes for you especially if you are a very technical, skilled trick hooper. If I'm watching you hoop and it's like trick, 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 combo, trick, 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 oh my god, so amazing, it's so good, and then by the end of the routine it's like, oh, it's done. I had no time to, di to digest anything. So it could be like trick, 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 pause. And then everyone's like, woo! 
through when you pause and then you can get back into the tricks. What I'm saying is break it up a little bit so that the audience also has time to breathe too. I think that's it. Just remember that we are here for you and we're here to give you creative feedback. We're gonna give it to you. We're gonna tell you all the things we love about your amazing routine. And then we'll also tell you stuff that you can work on. That way when you come back next year, you got this. I can't wait to see everyone there soon. And that's it fam. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye.